We're at the Faculty of Law, University of Copenhagen, and we're right now in the middle of a very busy week uh, full of uh, events dedicated to uh, new developments in international economic law with a special focus on China. It is a great pleasure for us to welcome speakers from all over the world to discuss and change their will of point about the latest development of international economic law. Well, I think it's a high-level event and uh, it's a way for us to support solving these problems uh, and issues uh, and also uh, um, helping out uh, and uh, taking a place in the international debate in this area. The reason for organizing those events, uh, a major international conference and a special seminar that is just about to start, uh, uh, is that uh, we are without any doubt witnessing major shifts in the engagement of um, global economic powers. Uh, and uh, according to many commentators, we are witnessing right now um, a new emerging form of globalization that might be actually China-driven. This year is the 40th anniversary of China's reform and opening up. During the period, China has become member of the WTO in 2001, with more and more foreign enterprises coming in and the Chinese enterprises going out, deeply engaged in the international market. Those enterprises benefit from economic globalization and at the same time contribute greatly to China's development and the world economy. China has adopted uh, recently very deliberate, very conscious and uh, extremely ambitious uh, policies in the field of trade and investment. Uh, in particular, that's the Belt and Road um, Initiative that is uh, uh, dubbed a new Marshall Plan without the war. It's going to cover uh, more than half of the world population uh, running on uh, three continents and in Asia, in Africa and in Europe. It's going to affect many European countries and it's going to affect also Denmark. I think that the growth of China in the last 40 years essentially has been phenomenal. But it's really only in the last couple of years that China has really put together all of the gains that it's made both in world trade and more recently in the context of investment both into and out of China and developed its own philosophy and its own views as to what to do with this new significance and this new potential role. I think that China uh, is in transition towards a, a new um, model, uh, modern society. And I think that in, in that I'm pointing towards, you know, a rule of law and also constitutionalism. Another important thing is the major disengagement of the United States uh, from the uh, variety of international trade and investment initiatives. And this has created the space uh, that is very quickly filling with uh, alternative new forms of international arrangements. Current US, I don't think that we could even call it a policy, the current U US practice of withdrawing, particularly from multilateralism. So criticisms of the WTO, uh, withdrawal from active participation in UN agencies, all of these steps backwards leaves China essentially as the most prominent defender of the concept of globalization and international investment liberalization. And I think for all of the countries which have come to rely on the US being the leader um, in the free trade, the liberalization charge, uh, this is very discomforting. It's so from that point of view, if the US continues along this line, it's going to be a bit of a new world for all of us to adjust to. I'm a person who have, was born in 1960s and gone through the ending of the Cultural Revolution. And I remember my, my childhood years just learning the Red Guards, you know, uh, you know um, Mao's little red books, you know. Uh, um, and then uh, we gone through the uh, opening up and I, I went abroad to study in the U.S. and came back. So we see the changes in China over the past, you know, uh, years. And I think that, you know, um, uh, there are progresses being made. Okay, um, uh, we start, you know, in terms of legal development from zero, nothing at the end of the Cultural Revolution to what we have now. It's a huge body of law being built up over the years, and, and that actually gave us opportunity to practice law in China. All of those new developments uh, 
are going to affect very directly uh, Denmark, Europe and the entire world. The Danish companies are going to be involved and um, the Danish companies are also going to be uh, parties uh, to the disputes um, that will arise out of the transactions that will be concluded um, within the Belt and Road, within uh, those uh, new flows of trade and investment that are China driven. We believe from the Minister of Foreign Affairs that this kind of conference is extremely timely. Uh, Denmark and China is working very, very closely together in these years and quite Recently we signed also a 10-year work program for the, um, the execution of our uh, comprehensive strategic partnership and this actually covers the um, many, many areas of cooperation between Danish, uh, uh, Danish uh, authorities and Chinese authorities uh, for the years to come. It's a fascinating process to watch and like so many things with China, it's very difficult to predict exactly how this will go in the future. This is an, an opening, uh, a part of the debate that has to continue uh, in Denmark, outside Denmark, uh, globally between China and, uh, and other uh, vital international partners. That provides a platform for researchers, practitioners and people working in public and private sectors to come together to have an a interesting discussion on such a subject. And I see also a lot of interaction on the university level between universities, exchange students, uh, joint research programs. Uh, so I can see also a lot of attention in the university world about cooperation with Chinese universities and that is also strong within law. And we do think this is just a starting point for the future discussion and we expect in the near future we would have plenty more of those events to address the issue about the role of China in international economic law. It's been such a pleasure for me to see uh, so many uh, high-level partners, so many skilled uh, world-renowned researchers and also practi practitioners uh, at the faculty at the University of Copenhagen these days debating an important topic uh, internationally. That's always a place as a dean and uh, I hope to get that chance uh, many times also in the future. Mm -hmm.